Hello, welcome to Show Studio's live panel discussions. In these discussions, experts from all parts of the industry discuss and debate the most important Fashion Week shows of the season. Today, in the midst of Milan Fashion Week, we're going to be discussing the SACE. So, <laughs> that's Versace, by the way, just so you know. Um, anyway, we have an excellent panel with us today. Um, I'll let you guys introduce yourselves. So we'll start with Tori. Hi, I'm Tori West, and I'm a freelance writer, and I'm also the editor and creator of Bricks Magazine. Hi, I'm Patrick Whitaker, one half of uh, Whitaker Malum, uh, relatively renowned designers of leather stuff. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. <laughs> I'm Zandra Rhodes, fashion and textile designer. I'm Flo Alday, I'm a trend researcher at WGSN. So yes, as you can see, we've got a really great panel, and um, I guess we should get started. So I want to ask you guys first, um, who's seen the show? I checked it out on Vogue. So Paddy's seen it, yeah. Flo has seen it. I think I haven't Sandra seen it. and Tori haven't seen it. I like to be surprised. OK, so I kind of thought before we actually start going through the looks and discussing, maybe I could just get a brief kind of um, ex explanation as to what you think of Versace. When you, when you hear the word Versace, what do you associate with the brand? So. Jarring. Jarring. Like jarring prints. Jarring prints. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm going to go with. Paddy? Well, I guess it's, lately it's the, the big things, the Rococo and the Baroque imagery, which you were mentioning, but I remember historically different stuff from before then, which uh, I think is quite relevant to some of what we've seen or we're going to look at. He was always very spot on with the prints and how he used sort of famous faces and worked them into the prints. Mm -hmm. And um, I think he, had, he was great on putting his finger right on the pulse for things that he was doing. And similar, um, lots of prints, quite kitsch, very sexy a lot of the time. Sexy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I would definitely say sexy. sexy. Yeah. Um, I mean, we should take a look then. So we'll just have a scroll through. And I guess if there's anything that, that stands out to you, we can start discussing. But... Um, well, this slash motif that comes up on, the, on, on a lot of these dresses, mm -hmm. um, I guess kind of rather Lucio Fontana-esque. Right, yeah. Uh, uh, the wonderful Italian artist who did these slash uh, pictures. I mean, for me, the, the thing that stood out a lot when, it, when I first started watching it was that, obviously, she, as, as a designer, does include a lot of black in the collections usually, but I felt like this time, initially, it started out a lot more black and a lot more kind of solid yeah. in that way, where, you know, she was really focusing on the color black. And I'm, I'm curious as to whether we think there was some kind of meaning behind that. I mean, I've got a few of the notes from the show that she, um, that she spoke about. And I'm not sure if you guys know also, but it was um, her first kind of co-ed show where she officially has introduced uh, menswear and womenswear showing at the same time. So normally she has about 60 looks and this was 90 looks. So it was obviously a bigger collection, but obviously you're catering to both menswear and womenswear. Mm. So that in itself is quite interesting that it's the first time Versace is actually doing this. And um, yeah, so she said here that hyper-masculine is okay for menswear as hyper-feminine is okay for women's wear. So what I found interesting personally is looking through, I really did see a big kind of difference between the men's wear and the women's wear. I didn't see them kind of interlinking as they possibly have in the past. For example, previous men's wear shows, she has tapped in on that feminine aspect of the men's wear with feathers and lace and, you know, silk, negligees and things like that, whereas... It's coming over more like <clears throat> masculine women's wear than feminine men's wear. Yes, uh, that's yes, it. definitely. <laughs> I agree with you there. So, I mean, are there any looks in particular that stand out to you that, that you want to kind of zoom in on and, and talk about so far? I mean, I, go on, Paddy. Well, I, 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 I think, you know, they're, they're just the proportions are very reminiscent of some of the stuff. I mean, it, it comes over quite early 80s to me. It reminds me a lot of the, the old school Versace collections. Um, there's some stuff coming up later on that's even more so the case. 
Um, and I guess, you know, red and black is going to give you that vibe anyway. And at this point in the collection, there's a lot of red and black, and it's quite monochromatic, isn't it? You know, this, design. Yeah, I mean, this is something that I noticed as well, is that usually I would find that her collections are possibly maybe more slightly more risky with colour and experiment with colour, whereas this one did feel maybe a bit on the safer side. Um, I mean, I haven't seen the whole collection, but at the moment it's looking very red and black. Yes, yes. there's a lot of that. I mean, the colours obviously get introduced more towards the end, as you can see here. I much prefer the colours other than just the black at the beginning. They almost look like two completely different collections, though. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting point. I mean, do you guys think that this is a cohesive collection? Do you, can you see it all kind of working together? Or do you feel like it's maybe split more into separate as, as a whole? I mean, it's, what very, are your it's very day wear and evening wear, very consciously split into. I mean, as we're getting further to the end, you can see that all of the evening wear looks are coming out with the leather and the slits and the boots, as opposed to those white trainers that we had a lot of earlier. Mm -hmm. but also, I think all of this black, I know that there's a lot of black in Versace always, but because the staging is so dark as well, and normally the collections are really like joyful and exciting and fun, and this, I can't work out what emotion Donatella is trying to convey. I'm not I mean, sure. I can kind of agree with that. For me, it, it, at first watching it, it did seem a bit unclear about what she was trying to say, but having read uh, a few of the notes, and uh, reviews of the show, there's quite some, in, like, there's some interesting underlying messages and, and symbols. Um, for example, outside the show, there was a statue of the, the Virtus symbol, which is the V, mm -hmm. which had been kind of molded over, as you can see here. I and, love that. And oh, yes. kind of just turned into a more fluid shape. And I think this kind of word of fluidity is something that she's playing on. Mm. As we know, it was a co-ed show for the first time and um, there's definitely something in there, especially with the prints that, that feature this kind of fluid design later on. I'm not sure if we, if we saw that yet, but this kind of symbolizes what, what was in the collection with regards to the, the prints. I haven't seen enough to show the prints yet, I mean. I, I think it's a bit further along where there's um, the fluid prints. Do you mean this is so it starts, yes, yeah, so yeah. you see okay. on the left, for example, yeah, is can, a good example. Can you click up one of these zebra things? Because it's quite interesting what goes on when you look at those closely. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's basically, it's a V <laughs> with a zebra oh, worked around it. Oh, that's been worked there. into it. Mm. Yeah. Uh -huh. And she's done it in sequence. So quite an intriguing it. way of using the V. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, for me, that. it just makes it more fluid. Yeah, it is like a definitely more fluid print. It's a good, it's, it's, it's a good print. And I think this whole kind of... I love it in the dress. It's a great print, for sure. No sequins. I can't see. I haven't got my glasses on. It's and a great I, I mean, there, it looks, very, it looks very dimensional. But I think, it's just, I think that's just really... I think the sequins are just worked onto a, a sheer ground. And it's... It, it, it's um... oh, it looks like it's almost it's like a cloquet, though, doesn't it? Mm. But it's not. It's just embroidery. Yeah, and the shoulders have got this, the straps have got this sort of padding in them, so yeah. they kind of grow out of the body a little there. Mm -hmm. I it's mean, obviously it's... exquisitely made. Yes. It's like a, you know, extraordinary piece. I mean, as always, the, the clothes are always exquisitely made. Um, but personally, for me, the, the only negative, if I had to be negative thing, um, would just be that, yeah, I just don't know if there was enough cohesion, and I'm not sure if... There was a strong enough kind of aesthetic as a whole compared to, I guess, compared to other seasons where, you know, Versace and Donatella, you know, she likes to, she likes to have some kind of gimmick or something that makes her show stand out and that's special from the others, you know, like last season with the jungle print and, and J-Lo coming out at the end. That was a wow moment. And then the 20-year the tribute to um, Janie's death. There was the reveal of the iconic 90s supermodels at the end when the, when the curtain was dropped. So she, she does like to play on this kind of Instagrammable moments that's going to get everyone talking, everyone kind of discussing. Yes. But this one just maybe didn't feel like there was anything specific that people are going to be able to share in that way. I didn't see anyone talking about it when I got up this morning. Like, normally uh, when yeah. it's like a good show, especially like last year with the whole J-Lo, 
that was everywhere. Like you couldn't yeah. escape that. I wouldn't say I woke up this morning and it's dominating no, my feet. No, no, of course. Like it didn't. No and it's not to say that every show has to have that kind of moment, but this one kind of almost felt like it was lacking in any kind of moment for me. But I mean, then, I mean, do you use the word gimmick? Not, <laughs> it's just lacking in not, moments to me. No, I, I, didn't, gimmick. Give me I a didn't mean gimmick. that in a bitchy way, but I'm, Versace is usually the show that I'm most looking forward to. So that I'm always going to, you know, as soon as it's out, have a look, have an opinion. And watching it, I didn't feel as strongly as I usually would. I, I wonder whether, though, in fact, depending on how you're looking at this show, if the majority of it is black, it's just unfortunate that it's also against a heavily black set. Yeah, yeah. Whether it shines or not, yeah. it isn't pushing forward no. the mannequins as they stand, so that, for example, here, I'm losing the black boots. Yeah. You're losing mm. What, mm. what there is worked into the whole of that mm. because this, of the black set. This has been a problem in the past with other brands where the kind of the catwalk photos don't do the clothes justice because... I mean, it might be a case that they haven't considered it, but with, with Visace, I'm sure they definitely have considered the set and how it's going to look photographically for these shots. But I guess the set for this is actually quite an interesting part of the show. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys know, but as people sat down um, to wait for the show to begin, there were screens that, as you can see here, reveal faces. So before Donatella's face was revealed on the screen, I think they were kind of reflecting the faces of the editors and people yes. sat in the front row. And I, to me, that kind of seems like a suggestion, like an ironic suggestion of being able to look at yourself. And I think it had quite, like, quite a deeper meaning. And imagine that. what you're going to look like in them. Perhaps. But also, we've um, talked a lot about how it's you know, not Instagrammable and that kind of thing. And then you have this yeah, ironic twist that forces the audience to kind of see themselves on the bigger screen. But maybe it's a wider comment about how fashion doesn't always have to be super Instagrammable, you know, seasonal, trend-led, that kind of thing. I mean, it's never particularly trend-led, but a lot of these pieces are much more commercial than her previous seasons. And, yeah, you know, in general, sure. we're seeing a move towards, you know, more investment pieces and higher pricing structures yeah. and that kind of thing. I would say that I, I would agree with you that there are things there that are actually are quite wearable. There's things that I could see myself in. And... Um, I think it is, it's actually quite a, a realistic selling collection. I think I can imagine it piecing out quite well. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. No. You know, we all, we all no, say that because there's no kind of like moment like we have with JLo that that means that it's maybe not as interesting as the previous collection. But if every single season had some sort of gimmick or something like that, then it would become, it would cheapen the whole thing if it was all the time. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I think sometimes, you know, at the end of the day, we have to remember that these are brands and their ultimate goal is to sell and to make money. Mm. So the fact that there are sellable, wearable pieces is definitely not a neg negative thing at all. I think maybe that me and you look at it from a different perspective, because obviously your style is we're looking at it in a more editorial view. So when we're looking at collections, we're thinking, how is that going to look like in an image? And because we're not seeing that because of the black runway, it's jarring us a little bit from it. Uh -huh. Especially, the, the, I, I agree that as soon as I, you put the collection up, I was just so disinterested in all of the black. Like, I just don't, like, it, it is just a commercial collection, but I much prefer the prints and when it's coming towards the lower bit because it's a lot more editorial, in my opinion. I mean, I always look at things, you know, on, on, on whether, whether I'd like to shoot them. Mm. And I guess as a whole, there are less things that I would pick out and want to kind of call in for a shoot, just based on, like we said, the fact that it is more commercial, less, mm -hmm. less kind of, not fantasy-based, but just less fun, if to say. Yeah. Um, but then should fashion be about wearing it or about looking at it? Like, surely it should be a good combination of both. About, sorry? It shouldn't just be about looking at it in photos and that kind of thing, you know. Yeah, of course. The way that we're going, it has to have a wearable element. Every single piece in the collection has to be able to be worn by everyone, not just, you know, a model who's tall and skinny. No, you're absolutely right. I yeah. mean, should we, should we maybe go more specific now on some, some looks? Mm. Yeah. So if there's any that stand out to you, just feel I love free to... the trainers, to... personally. The trainers? Yeah, you kind of lose that in these catwalks, but that... There's one, yeah. They're great. 
It's interesting because there's been so little sportswear this season, this and this is one of the only houses that sports. She's back. kind of she's kind of tapped out of sportswear, and it seems like the whole sportswear thing mm. has died down. And for some reason, she's she's decided to kind of reintroduce it and and, and give it meaning again. Mm. Um, I don't know how you feel about that. You know, Versace kind of. It's interesting because um, w w the early Versace collections, before the, 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 the sort of the Rococo imagery and the Greek key and all that, well, I, I went to Versace in 1983 and was taken round the atelier by Versace as a student. And um, it, it was a very different look. The aesthetic then was more like what Gianfranco Ferri and slightly montana -y. well of course that's what was going on at the time but it was it was more futuristic and it was less there were none of these classical references and it was quite brightly block colored yes. fairly sporty mm -hmm. stuff yeah. um, and I, I think that she has tried to sort of reference that and in fact um, some of the pieces around here if you go if we go forward a little bit to the to the leather blues with the with the with the with the trousers made of the different strips of leather and um, I think it's forward just a little um, I felt quite a strong connection between some of the, uh, with the big rib collars. Keep going, are we going the right way for it? I think it's, no, 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 it's further. Scoot ahead a bit. We may have missed it, I don't know. Here we go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, here we go. So just, just the next block down, yeah, around here. The, these pieces really remind me of the, uh, um, the, uh, Old oh, Versace. Yeah, and especially the the um, uh, Vera Montes uh, and uh, Antonio Lopez illustrations. I think we picked up some of those just for a look at. They're not strictly super relevant, but they will give you. Those are the images that, that Versace used to. You know, this is early Versace yeah. proportions and um, the, the the style of the house back then. And I feel it's very much coming from this world. Do you yes. know what I mean? Again, yes. with this, you know, really the silhouettes are quite large and. As we just said, it's much more like she's putting a man's silhouette on a woman than a woman's on a man. So that is quite an aces aesthetic anyway. Um, you know, and I, I, I mean, and I, I like this part of the collection really because it, I suppose it's almost like a nostalgia thing to sort of, you know, see that again. But apart from the nostalgia, I think, one hates to say it, but like the sneakers are an essential part of wardrobe these days, I think, in yes. some way. And I think you need, if you're going to sell, you need it in touch with your audience as well and not just, mm. you mm. know, mm. Seeing, ha seeing how the whole thing can go together. Mm. I mean, I'm curious to know what you guys think her audience is at this current moment. Because for me, it's sometimes, it's sometimes a bit unclear. You know, the messages that she's trying to convey with, with her collections, especially this one, when she says, she said here, um, what I'm trying to show with this collection is that sensuality comes from the brain from the way one thinks. So that's quite a bold statement to make. And do you feel like there's any tapping in on that kind of notion with, with the, the clothes that you're looking at? I think on the leather dresses on the women, which are really sharp and tailored and have a kind of Wall Street feel to them, that comes across there because we're seeing a lot of this like power dressing, um, you know, kind of mood for women in the post Time's Up era and all of that kind of thing, which I'm not going to go into, but um, I guess we're looking for a new way to convey femininity and sexiness. And also with this co-ed show, having females in kind of a male space and vice versa, and how do you make kind of sexiness a part of that? And I think that these pieces convey that really well because they're not as obvious as some of the previous collections, but I think that they kind of combine that power intellect thing that she was saying before the show. I mean, Versace, yeah, Versace is known to be an obviously sexy brand. Mm. Lots of skin on show, lots of short headlines and things like that. And this definitely did kind of, didn't flaunt it as much as it, I guess it usually would mm. in that respect. So I guess she's trying to say something different when she, when she says that sensuality comes from the brain, maybe she's suggesting that, you know, it's not all about how much skin you're gonna show on your legs and things like that. So I do get what she's trying to say, but my, 
I mean, I'll just read it. Where does it say again? I just think she's just tried to do too much in one collection in that disregard. It's like, it's a little bit of sportswear in there. There's a little tail ring in it. It's not, there's nothing like strong of one thing in it. It's just like, it's just, I don't know. I just think it's a bit everywhere. And also the last look is at Kendall Jenner. It's just a bit. I mean, I suppose this is the last look. It's going to be the show, the it's, show look. Yeah, but it's the finale not. look. Do you think it's a bit simple? Do you think it's nice that it's just simple? I mean, obviously, the, the way it's constructed is definitely not simple. But, Absolutely. But I mean, as it, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a simple silhouette. Yes, yeah, a simple, a simple silhouette. Simple thing, but it's not a simple, simple thing. The more simple it is, the less simple it is Absolutely. behind yeah. the scenes. Absolutely, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, in terms of even the jewellery and the accessories, the way that it's been put together, it, one would say it is quite simple. It's, it's, a cute, so, it's a cute dress, but yeah, I agree. it's gorgeous. Like it's all right, but it's not like a last look. It's quite, it? mi it's quite minimalist. Yeah. When, when, but when you think of Versace, you think of more is more. So this is quite in, uh, an interesting kind of ending to to a Versace show, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, the opening dresses were also similarly disarmingly simple. Yes. Um, you know, the first the first piece is up. If we could bring up that one on the top right there, please. Yeah. I mean, again, it's black against black, so you can't really judge it, but it's a, it, they're, they're beautifully, they are very, very nicely cut. You can mm. see them, and they're actually yes. quite shapely. Um, it's, almost, it's almost slightly Mugler-esque, you know, early Mugler, sort of like a plain Mugler yeah. uh, thing. Uh, or, again, slightly montana uh, which I, I'm absolutely down for, personally. But um, yeah, I, I know what you're saying. It seems like it... It seems to start out in one place and end in the same place, but in between, it's just, <laughs> quite quite, a lot of... As a story, it just doesn't work. It's like I'm almost looking at completely different collections. Oh, I don't work. feel... On looking at the whole thing, I don't feel the whole story comes over. No, I don't. No, that was, that was my, thing jumps over. over. That was my main issue, I think, that I just didn't know what the story was. And then after reading it, I kind of understood it a bit more, but the thing that I'm still failing to understand... I, do. I feel like it's still quite a bit vague, that quote. That she, the thing that I'm failing to understand, though, is how this is supposed to be her first official co-ed show, showing men's wear and women's wear. Women's well, wear well and obviously, it is Lily. She's, she's got men and women in the show. And yeah, I yeah, yeah, of course. seeing men and women together on the, in the but same show. I love it, because it's what we're like as a society. No, I mean, I agree. You know I mean? It's, uh, and, it, you know, but, but it, as we said earlier, it's not a... Um, uh, um, a Paloma Spain. No, this is what I want to say. She's she's <laughs> women's wear. She's kind of behind on this as well because a lot of other brands have already done this. And one thing that I think about Versace when I think of menswear is that it does represent the metrosexual male, the male that is in touch with his feminine side and isn't afraid to show that. And this is why the menswear for me is a little bit kind of not problematic, but. It's, it's, just it's, five it's years ago. you know she said here for example she wanted to celebrate the difference between masculine and feminine sexuality i find that an interesting statement considering you're showing a collection that's supposed to be fusing the two together yeah what was her what was her reasoning i guess to to want to separate those two ideas when yeah. when when her whole kind of ethos about menswear is that men can be slightly feminine and and kind of show that side. Just because you have men and women together in a show, that doesn't mean that you can't celebrate individual sexualities. And no, I think course. that yeah. maybe that's something that we don't often kind of celebrate is the fact that you can be fluid in what you wear and how you speak, how you walk, but then you can also have a very masculine energy or sexuality or character, whatever, and that's the same for femininity. So for me, I find that what maybe doesn't translate as well is how femininity has come across as strongly apart from these you know really nipped in waist and everything that we're seeing i i yeah i just don't think there's that much of a distinct distinction Did you say the clothes are fluid i think they are yeah because there are very kind of traditional masculine and feminine shapes especially in the women's tailoring with the waist and the really strong silhouettes but I wouldn't call this kind of a, a typical gender fluid collection in the way that we it's normally kind think. Of like a well, this is this is this is what I was thinking. When you think of the Versace customer and the, the person who's going to buy Versace, I think we have to remember that the way we view fashion is that we kind of, in the not to be in a cheesy way, but we live it. You know, we think about it every day. We're always analysing it, always looking at it. Mm -hmm. Maybe a typical Versace customer who, you know, obviously the brand is appealing to the masses, maybe someone like that will look at this and really consider it forward thinking in the way that it's exploring the menswear, you know, 
we're, we're, we tend to be more over-analytical in that way because it's something that we just kind of... We're being forced to be analytical with no music and none of our other senses mm. being true. worked on because when you go to a show, all your senses are being worked on so that Absolutely. it's very cleverly getting to your senses to what mood that it's yeah. wanted and we're looking at it absolutely still mm. as a still mm. with... Yeah, I mean, we can watch. No, but then know, that's, quite, that's quite comparable with shopping for it in the way that people do now online. Do you know what I mean? There'll be people, the there'll store, be people. You're only in the seeing store. it on a hanger. You're just seeing it on the rack, or you've got the, the zhuzhu being in the store and that experience. Yes. But um, I think we're getting a kind of like a shopper's view of it in as much as, you, you know, we are yeah. just having to treat, take it for it's what it is. much more interesting when you see the projections. I think the projections, and to be honest, the statue at the beginning was the only thing that were going, oh, that's nice, oh. Do you know what I mean? Yes. The rest of it is just quite just flat. There's nothing that screams out to me on the runway that I'm like, oh my gosh. I mean, it, it is very different, obviously, now watching it moving. Usually when I tend to watch shows for the first time, I do watch them moving because... It helps to watch them moving. Yeah, of course. Because sure. you're, when you're wearing it, you've got to sort of like... Or yeah. you'll see whether something is giving the feel that you want yeah, to, absolutely. to have when you're in it. Yeah, absolutely. So. It's great that we're looking at this now. I, I wonder if your opinions have changed slightly now that you're seeing it moving. Has, has, no, you know, is there anything that's standing out to you now? I still think it's a bit all over the place in terms of like story-wise, even when you see it moving. I don't think that makes much of a no, difference. These coats are amazing. But as we said, that, you know, there are still pieces in there that are really sellable and re mm. people are going to really want well. them. All of this yeah. bit here, yeah, definitely. I, I, think, I think any dyed in the wool, um, Russian oligarch, or uh, I don't know who a potential customer may or may not be, but well heeled jet set types that want to go into Versace and spend their money will find things that look like Versace that they will probably want and probably be able to wear. Yeah. Which mm, is, sure. you know, which is for them is probably a big box tick in terms of um, commerciality. I mean, that, that is quite an extraordinary fur coat. I love that. It's, it's faux, just so you know. It is faux. Really? <laughs> I think it must be with those colours, but you never know, do you? I mean, no, it doesn't have to be. No, as you know, the Sarchi have, have, have banned all fur. Have they? All fur exotic uh, skins, so that would be faux. Cool. Yes. Can we go back to the um, sports jumpers that were earlier on in the collection? Yeah, the knitwear is quite nice. I like the shape of them, and also they had this kind of like cut out at the bottom that was kind of nice. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I really one. like yeah, yeah, the yeah. shape of that. Funny stepped cardigan. Mm. I thought those were very interesting. They're nice. Yes. I mean, one thing also that I want to mention is: Do you think that maybe because, as we know, uh, Versace has been bought by um, the Michael Kors company, Capri Holdings. Capri Holdings. So, I personally may feel that there has been a slight change since then where the, 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 she has gone slightly more commercial in that sense. Mm. That makes you so mean to sense fit now. in with another aspect of the Michael Kors empire? Possibly, or just by the fact that, you know, has she maybe lost a little bit of her control and influence now that there's a kind of bigger, bigger power overseeing things? But she, I mean, she's still creative director. I think that yeah. a lot of these... Um, yeah, these looks here, these sporty ones and the knitwear, they do definitely feel more American. Yeah. But yeah. then we're looking at that as a negative thing and, you know, it's subjective, but equally, I feel like a lot of this collection is really kind of trying to democratise the brand because the way that I always think of it, it's very kind of a certain type of woman or man who wears it, you know, as you were saying, like metrosexual or like, you know, like glamour, legs out, whatever. And I think that it's really smart doing it like this and offering really... Um, versatile pieces that anyone could wear as like a gateway to the brand. So I understand that maybe you feel like her influence has kind of been diluted or whatever, but if it ends up that more people become Versace customers, then... And she's doing her job. Mm. Fair point. That, now, that, that print or, 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 or applique or whatever it is, um, can, we, can you just go on a couple more, click a couple more? So we've got a... We've got a yeah, and it's the men's one I'm interested in. Now, that's probably what maybe she's thinking is the most gender-fluid female-male yeah. look that there is. And, uh, again, it's, it's only because it's kind of quite a, a feminine oh, applique. Yeah, yeah, sort of a floral applique on a... I've got, I'm guessing, is a sweater. 
Um, is that important to us? I mean, do we think that this is do we think this is forward thinking in terms of gender, adding floral prints to a to a menswear garment? Does that does that make it more gender fluid? Does that does that increase its femininity? It, does slightly. It, does it, it is. Well, maybe, but it's a, the crossover now is I the, guess, the line is very flexible. I guess for the average customer, for the average male customer, that might be something that's very, you know... Yeah, I wanted to look at that one. Can we zoom that up a little bit? Um, I, I mean, I, actually, I, I, mean I, I, quite, I quite like that, um, that, uh, that, that image, that, 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 that print. Uh, and it's interesting to see the choices they've made placing the print. Ah. Right, oh. there we go. <laughs> because the, 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 the sleeves are symmetrical and mirrored, but the, the body of the jacket isn't, the collar's mirrored, and if you go down the pants, they're all mirrored very nicely, uh, as much as they, well, ish. I mean, they've sort of placed the, those medallions on the knees and there's yeah, some they're sort of symmetry. Placed. Because the medallions it, look like they've been oversimplified when you see it blown up, don't yeah, they? Yeah, I mean, I, I must admit, I do quite like that as a suit, but it's always interesting to see these choices that they make about, go back up to the jacket, the jacket again, uh, you know, about, about placing, because I do find that placing over the front of the jacket quite odd. It is, um, the low you know, very middle, it's a yeah, bit Yeah, you've off. got a face peering out of one panel and on the other side something else. And it, it, I, 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 like, I kind of like the asymmetry and the randomness of it. It's just that when I, if I was buying that, I'd be really... You kind of want to know why people have done things and we're always looking yeah. for symmetry. Or if, and if we don't find symmetry, we have to find justification for there not to be the symmetry. And normally or to be truly asymmetric. Well, normally they're very kind of engineered great with the, the placement of their prints and they're very carefully considered so it's interesting that you've picked let's up see, on Let's see the coat that... in the middle there, yeah, just to see what happened, what's happening there. The one that above one's that. one's a lot more symmetrical. Yeah, that one's yeah, That one's much more symmetrical, yeah. Not that it matters much. So do you think that's, that's interesting how some of the garments have considered their, their placement and some haven't? Is, there must be a reasoning behind that? Yeah, or... that's much more traditional Versace placing. Yes. For sure. Um, I mean, maybe it comes back to the conversation about fluidity and how not everything has to fit into kind of traditional boxes. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Good point. That could be what she's thinking about. I mean, they are... It, it's, it's a beautiful it's, print. It's, it's an amazing, amazing print. print. I always love the prints, you know. That's the one thing that I, uh, I'm sure to love at a Versace show. Even if I don't like the garment, the actual print itself, nine times out of ten, or ten times out of ten, I love it. Mm -hmm. So that I can't fault. What about these shoes, these rubber boots? Well, this yeah. is what I wanted to go into the accessories now, actually. And, and yeah, let's have a look at the feet here, because that looks like he's got wellies on. Yeah, they well, do. These are tractor, these are tractor sole uh, boots, which are apparently one of the newest trends at the moment from looking at from other collections. Tractor sole boots? I think, believe that's what they're called, yes. Right. <laughs> Can you explain? They look like those sort of rubber ones they wear in. Um... Just falling asleep. Sandra? <laughs> <laughs> and that's how uninteresting the entire this thing is. This is, this is the perfect summary of your opinion <laughs> on the show. <laughs> Edit that. Oh my god. I don't think they can, darling. Nice. But... <laughs> I've known you to fall asleep in, in, a, in, in your soup oh, at dinner. <laughs> yeah. I, find, I find it very difficult to judge it with all stills. Yeah, and yeah. not them walking because you're not getting the feeling of the clothes. So all is, we're is aware the, um, of are stills where you're looking at it yet? point blank and critically and not seeing yeah, mm, the absolutely. actual clothes moving because so often it's when things are moving that you really feel it looks great. That looks good, you see, seeing a Here line up like that. I think we can that. watch it. OK, let's see. Let's That's see. much better. Here we, we go. Have the music, I have maybe, a visual. Yeah. So this, the first looks actually, I think there was a statement uh, explaining how she's put a blonde woman and a blonde man at the beginning and people were saying that this was supposed to symbolise Donatella herself um, and the idea that they're both kind of wearing this black tailoring but worn in different ways. You know, the woman's wearing a jacket with a, with a mini dress underneath and I think the guy behind is yeah, in a full black suit. So that in itself is quite a strong opening statement that, that is open to interpretation, I guess. Um, but wearing... the black just can kind of continues, doesn't it? The men are wearing, what, is it women as well? They're wearing these really big, like mechanic style leather gloves. 
I hadn't noticed the gloves. Well, it's so dark. You can't I think really we should see. look maybe a bit more at the accessories now. Cause oh, yeah. Mm. For example, the sunglasses I think are great and I think they'll really sell. Those to me are very kind of nostalgic of. When I look at those, I think of Victoria Beckham that would have worn those to avoid the paparazzi in the early mm. noughties. And yeah. she kind of. That really looks made very that Victoria thing. Beckham, that look. She, yeah, she, she really... would wear that, wouldn't she? So the glasses, I think, are a, a real kind of strong part of the collection in terms of the accessories. She always does great accessories. Well, the accessories are the real money makers, yeah, exactly. without a doubt. I mean, everyone can have a go at those, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, there we go. Are these, so these they, are the they, boots. boots look mental in the quite they're a very, way. They're sort of like a slightly heavier courage. Yeah, yeah, with a chunky sole <laughs> courage. We probably, yeah. I don't know if they had some buttons at the edge. Mm. I mean, that shows you how oversized the silhouette is. I mean, that's a big shoulder, and that, mm -hmm. that one really evokes the feeling of those old uh, Antonio Lopez pictures that we were looking mm -hmm. at. Uh, again, with the, the, the red and black plaid and the big rib collar, and there's a whole sort of... It's all quite authoritative. Like, I, it, even the black one, the black looks at the beginning just remind me of, like, bouncers. <laughs> At least it's women wearing them. Bounces. Like bounces, like, like on a night out. Do you know what I mean, it, it looks a bit like security at a posh club. Like, <laughs> I mean, that do you know to what me, I mean? That's, but that if I, bounces. It's really. interesting. If I looked at that and I wasn't knowing that I was watching a Versace show, I would never instant, apart from the Versace written Except on the pocket. Except obvious logo. I would, I would never, apart from that, I would never, I don't think I would look at that and, and instantly guess that was Versace. No. I would, no. I would. No. And that, that for me is maybe also what I'm, kind of not okay with in, in that way. But is that fair to mm. say that, you know, there's so many different, for me, if, there's different references from other designers. If we were being shown this whole thing as a Versace show, I don't think, unless you zoom in on logos, yeah. that you would necessarily say, you know, because we're thinking of some of the strong imagery that you've got of him, which isn't there. Mm -hmm. But maybe this is the simplification that we're in today. Well, this is what I wanted to tap into also when we talk about simplification. I always look at the hair and the makeup in a show because I think that really does I didn't look communicate the, the theme of, of a collection. And recently, not only with Versace, but with, with all collections, there has definitely been a kind of taming of this. And it's interesting to see here. Do you that think you'd actually call it dumbing down? I, pe I mean, I guess that's a yeah, that's a, a fair kind of statement to make because, you know, if you compare this to the, you know, I've looked at Versace shows from from way back then, and there always is a statement makeup element, a statement hair reference, and not only with Versace, as I said, but in general, that side of the shows has definitely become more tame. And as you said, it could be because it's, you know, dumbing down, appealing it to It could them. be the fear of the, of the styling and the, those elements taking over from the, from the actual apparel but, that, that they're but, trying to sell as well. I guess I'm looking at it from an editorial point of view as well when shooting. You know, if I'm going to shoot pieces, I'm going to consider the hair and makeup maybe in a more outlandish way mm. than than imagining someone actually walking down the street in these garments and maybe I wonder if it is a dumbing down which goes with the period that we're living in that everyone's got to be concerned that they're going to sell it. Of course. I think that's a big, you know, a big part of fashion nowadays is I feel like it's probably taken a lot more seriously. People are definitely more concerned with selling. Um, and then obviously there's a lot of reasons behind that. Uh, I think we've discussed it before. The recession, for example, when that happened, I think that definitely had an impact on consumers as a whole. But equally, it also, I mean, the whole aesthetic of this ultimately is that it's much more conservative than what we've seen before coming out of the house. And that's the same in the general kind of mood of um, Milan in general. If you look at like Bendy and Prada, the general shift, especially with um, the women's clothes, is towards a more conservative office, but still really powerful aesthetic. And I think that with the hair and makeup, you could look at it as 
dumbing down, as Sandra said, but if you go back to her original message of you know, sexiness and confidence coming from intellect and the brain, then this kind of makes sense to me because mm -hmm. it means that you're not distracted by you know, literally something that you see at face value. You're looking at the body, the confidence, how things are worn. Yeah. I think it does make sense in the context of this collection. And also, it makes it achievable for the people who no, are going to be No, it definitely makes it achievable. It. You know, the, the average person is definitely more likely to look at these outfits and see themselves wearing it. If but therefore, that is dumbing down. Yeah. If, yeah if their because hair, you're if putting they're, average in it. Yeah, if their hair and makeup is a lot more kind of general, you mm. know, accessible to the public. So. But you can still do something interesting and sell it. Is I completely agree. You know, it depends on who's looking at it. For me, when I look at it. Regardless of whether I like the hair or makeup, I'm still looking at the clothes and deciding whether I would buy it. So surely anyone, that means anyone, can look at an outfit on a catwalk and regardless of the hair and makeup, decide whether they like the actual clothes. So this is, this is where the problem for me is that... The other thing, I, on flicking through that like it's going through, yeah. I would say that the men are in the more extreme versions. Yes, possibly. The I men mean... are the ones who are done up as exotic and the women are all in... What? Shifts. Shit. Shifts. Shifts. <laughs> I did not say that. <laughs> no, the women are in very, really very, very simple versions of a shift. Right. Yeah, fair point. No, it's, uh, it, 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 it's, it's in, I, I think for me, the, the, the I mean, I, I find when we look at that dress in close up, it, it, that they do, they, they really stand out as I mean, they're interesting pieces, but they, they, they do quite odd against the rest of it. There's something about what's going on with those shoulders. That one I think is chain mail without a yes. doubt. Um, I mean, I'm just looking at the accessories. You know, they're, that they're, green, the, well, that green one is chain mail. Yeah, yeah, the green one is chain, chain mail one, I think. Can but we it's see interesting that, that she's that you know, yeah. the stylist is Jacob K, and normally he does kind of... Who's the stylist? Jacob K. Mm -hmm. So he is usually quite heavy, I would say, on the accessories, likes to show off the accessories, and it's interesting that on a lot of these looks, especially the kind of girly evening skimpy dresses, he's almost refrained that, and, and, and toned that down as well. But that green dress, I have friends who've literally bought a dress that looks like that of ASOS last year. <sighs> Do you know what, like, it's not, like, amazing, is it, really? It's I don't not... think it's supposed to be reinventing anything mm. in particular, but I get what you're saying. It's in terms of the silhouette, yeah, again, as we were just... saying before with the mm. silver one. It is quite a simple mm. look, especially with no jewellery. Yeah, that's it. I feel like I just want it a bit more going on. I, that's just my personal... Is it it's obviously an intentional... I know it's intentional. I just wish this it is obviously intentional because, because in previous shows there's definitely been more accessories. Definitely more showy, you know, flashy, gaudy. This definitely is more toned down overall. I don't think anything in the whole show is flashy or gaudy. In this show? No, I would say there usually that yeah usually there's more and the this most is... extra thing is the statue I think on the way in. It's not that's the thing you just look at it and you think it's nice you don't. It's all right. You You'd say it's another evening jacket for Elton John to wear. Yeah, can we see that? <laughs> it, there's no there's no show. <laughs> would you agree that there's no show stopping pieces? Nothing that you're looking at and saying wow. There's elements of nice things like the but knitwear. But I think was you cool. don't say well because it's been dumbed down. It's not like they're, it's just... You need some Zandra prints in there, that's what they need. <laughs> I mean, but Versace always had lovely prints. And I mean, I just say that it doesn't say anything extraordinary. Mm. Yeah, I think, I think it's, it's fair to say that there's no um, breakthrough stuff here. I mean, it's not like it's a... a, a mind-blowing, you know, we're not seeing anything that we've not seen before. No, uh, I think that's probably the in point. A way, I think she's you know. probably doing that on purpose, yeah. considering it's a co-ed show and it's her first official one. Yeah. I think maybe she's making and a Why point. was it done co-ed? To get a bigger audience? Well, I guess because it's more forward-thinking, isn't it, these days? It's got to be, and it's got to be good from a cost perspective. That's the um, thing as well. To stage it all just once. But then again, I think the downside of it is that you do end up with this, it becomes quite sprawling. And um, 
But the Versace man and the woman have always been similar in their aesthetic, yes. obviously because it's designed by the same person, whereas you've got other brands, perhaps like Dior, which to me there is a separation between mm. the Dior man and the Dior woman. Mm. So if, if this kind of idea is, is it's something that Versace has always kind of embodied, mm. then the kind of transition from, from that to co-ed should be completely smooth. And, and to me it is, it looks like, it doesn't look like the Versace man has suddenly changed completely or the Versace woman has changed. They've blended well together mm. and you could see that they still are a Versace man and woman in a joint show. So... And it's a shame because in a way there are parts of the collection that could have been actually very well been made for men and women and being virtually the same garments in different sizes, which is really, if you're going to do that and you're going to do that properly, you're going to do it as a, as a sort of sustainable thing or a statement, that's the natural conclusion of it, is to push it that far so that actually, you know, that suit that we were analysing the print on, that could easily have been made as a men and a woman's piece and just sized differently. But instead of which, we've got sort of like a male version and a female version mm -hmm. the using the same fabrics going out, which, are, uh, and then, yes, as we said before, the silhouette is... I think the silhouette is, is, a, is genuinely quite masculine throughout. Uh, That's the thing, I think if... Um if you're going to kind of commit to a co-ed thing, which Versace and lots of other brands obviously are doing, then I think go even further with it. And you can have far fewer looks than this because obviously we are, you know, in the age of sustainability, which is really important. And all of the big houses are, you know, doing their own mm. efforts for it. But I think, you know, Burberry had what, 130, 140 looks. And you can achieve the same message, especially in a co-ed show with half the amount, it should but be the same She has cut amount, them it? down because usually a men's wear show would have 60 and a women's wear show would have 60. No, this of course, was, but if... This if was around 90, so it has been, yeah. you know, there's not 60, there's not 120. But for, for a unique kind of show concept, in theory, if you're, you know, doing it for men and women, it only needs to be illustrated once, as you were saying, you know, you can achieve the same thing and it, with the same amount of models and just have fewer things mm -hmm. rather than this kind of men's and women's version if it's a true co-ed show. But then this is my question, is, is it designing the same clothes to be worn by men or women, or is it still having that male-female split? That's not clear to me, that's what I, I would like this to is, see. I just wanted to actually read a quote that uh, she said about the show, and she said, for me with this show, I want to highlight that today there is a generation that doesn't care about gender. Mm. And then she said, it's not about male or female, it's about having a point of view, it's about focusing on what is going on, wanting to know what is the next thing, not just in fashion, but in general, what's next. Now, do you think these clothes reflect that there is a generation of people that don't care about gender? Do you think that reflects that idea in the clothes? I think to a certain extent, yeah. Yeah? I think so, because, you know, there is such a masculine feel to a lot of the feminine clothes, and obviously that's kind of easier to do than putting a feminine spin on traditionally masculine shapes and models, but... Do you think there's subtle nuances? I think that so, and of... I think that as, you know, in the future collections, if they're going to continue along this line, then it will become clearer and more kind of concise. I think there's elements of it, but of course she hasn't gone whole hog and put a boy in that dress on the right, which, you, you know, if she'd put a lad out... Well, this is the thing. That, That's what, how I feel that about that breaking gender. That would have been more that statement. Would, and that would have probably been more interesting that would, for us. Which, what, for a major, for a major fashion. Put a boy in that dress on the right there. Yes. You know, yes. this, yes. this is what I'm, this is what I'm really saying. Make she's, it totally asexual. she's bringing yes. gender into it, but maybe it's because I, uh, I mean, I don't dress typically masculine, but for me, this doesn't push gender or break gender. No, I don't think it pushes well, it. Well, to me, it doesn't push gender, but to me, the whole show comes over as quite masculine. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, yes. for example, looking at the, the girls, they look more masculine than the men. The men just look like men. Yeah. Yep, I agree yeah. with that. And the men don't look that girly either. I don't think oh, he's, not I don't, at all. I don't think she's, she's, she's moved the femininity onto the men's wear, but she's moved the masculinity onto the women's wear. Yeah. So, yeah. Which, ends. let's face it, is not very, it's not particularly original. No, of you know, it's not. It's not. It's not as original as the reverse suggestion, or as risky. But you know, if they were to put a boy she out in that dress, might not want to dress, take a risk. Well, that she's, would be. That's really genuinely trying, taking she's a really risk. Really trying isn't to it? challenge gender. It would have been interesting to see what would have 
the, the, what the reaction would have been had she put a man mm. in one of the dresses. Mm. If, she's, if she's talking about, you know, highlighting that generation doesn't care about gender, would, would we want to see men in dresses and skirts and heels? Do you think that would have... Not necessarily in heels, but I think that I think if that I think if that, that if that that dress that we're talking about, that shift was it would have on gone boy, equally with the boots. Yeah. Yeah. The boots would have been like fine. I think that's a good point. Why, like, is, I don't is she focusing why on gender because it's gender. a buzzword? And I she think thinks so. this, this, yeah. this is the, this is the, this is a possibility, yeah. and that's what I'm saying is that if that is what's going on. It, um, it's a, you know if she really wanted to do that then it could have been could have gone a bit further but then yeah. it's a big brand and it's not what you know oh. she's done I it in the past as I said she's with feathers she's right in what she's saying but that doesn't reflect in the collection like I it, th putting gender on it like that just reminds me of how when brands like five years ago would start thinking about gender like it's nothing groundbreaking it's nothing new everyone maybe just kind of looks unison and I get maybe, that maybe she's tapping in on that buzzword then so and, I think um, it's a buzzword thing personally. has she just been taken over didn't you say was it about a year and a half well, they sold the yeah you know, so another that group. might be just a reflection of how that's I think it could over, definitely be having an influence on on it would do. It's very Michael Kors, isn't yes, it? Yes, because it, really? the brand, is, you know, it doesn't mean she's not in control, but it means she has to be aware of the implications. Of the higher powers as well. Yes. Mm. Um, I mean, I guess we've kind of covered everything. Are there any final things that anyone wants to... Well, I, I, I like the collection. I think it's commercial, and I think they're going to sell it pretty well, and there's things that I'd wear, but I think it, I don't think... Uh, I think she's sort of slightly shoehorning this um, gender thing into it. Uh, and if, if, if that's their take on it, that's fair enough. But, you know, it's, that's... Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I understand that it's commercial. I just wish there was more creativity involved. Like, you can still be quite creative and sell. It doesn't have to be boring to mm -hmm. sell, you know? You can still have a good few statement pieces and be a bit creative about it, in my opinion. Point. Anyone else before we? I think it will be interesting to see what happens in the next few seasons because yeah. for me yeah. this feels like the beginning of something that will completely yeah. change the shape. I'm of the house. She said it in the press release. Yeah. What's next? I'm definitely <laughs> interested to see what's next. Yeah. We're definitely at a very interesting period where we all don't really know what's going to happen mm. in this whole gender thing and how it's going to affect a lot of the shows. Mm. Well, it would be interesting, I guess, from saying that, you know, what do you think eventually by having the clothes in the store that they should be presented together for, for anyone to kind of walk in and purchase and, you know, there's not a specific men's wear section, not a specific women's wear section. Do you think the, the most forward-thinking way of kind of selling is to merge them in that way as well? If you're presenting them on the same catwalk, does that mean that they should be... Well, possibly, the there, must be, there must be that. I'm still, I'm I think we really are sure, but, on, you know. on a, uh, an interesting cusp of a wave to know what way things are going to go and what way things are going to sell mm -hmm. in, in that sense. Mm. I think as well, I know that it's not kind of typical for what we normally see from Versace, but I'm glad that women still look very kind of forceful and powerful in these looks. I think that's so important. Mm. Yeah. I think mm. that's that authoritative really element is She does that very, very well. That's true. That's, that's, that's true. Definitely and that, and, and that true. Is, yes, that the women do look is. forceful in this. She's always, yeah. she's always been an advocate for strong, powerful, sexy, confident yeah. women. And I think that definitely great. still comes yeah. across yeah, despite yeah. all of the other changes. So it would be interesting to see how she develops with the men's, or I guess, in that way, mm. where we maybe feel that it's a bit underdeveloped. Mm. Or, and what will the future of male sexiness look like, I think will be really interesting to see. Mm. Maybe short chain male dresses. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> well, let's leave it at that. Um, thank you to all the panellists and thank you for watching. For more extensive Fashion Week coverage, be sure to visit showstudio.com. And if you're watching via Show Studios YouTube, be sure to like, comment and subscribe below. And we will see you next time. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>